what's moving, what's shaking, y'all. Y'all see me. Thank y'all for checking me on out. It's about to be a little, uh, just a little quick video, man. It's a little windy out here today, but I'm glad you guys came and checked me on out. Y'all see my girl Nebula. I ain't rode in a, few, in a little while, but hopefully she's all right. She ain't mad at me. But yeah, let me get a little um, cold start real quick. Just want to talk about a few things. Hold on for one second. All right, we got action. A little cold start. Better warm on up real quick and then um we're gonna get at it. Be right back. Girl all warmed up. Damn, Alpha Romero, huh? It's not bad. Alright, but anyways, man, thank y'all for checking me on out. I really, really appreciate you guys. But yeah, me and my girl Nebula just taking a little cruise around the neighborhood. I had to get my fix, you know what I mean? All the riders know what I'm talking about, man. When you when you get when you fiend, you need that fix. Smell that exhaust or something, hear the sound of of your bike. that you know I won't say hate let's just say I don't like about my 2007 Jixxer 600 but I would say you know one thing you know when I have my um my 2020 Yamaha R3 one thing that I um I liked about it was that it actually had a fuel gauge you know it told me when I needed to get gas or basically just told me how much gas I had in the tank and as you guys probably can see I'm not sure if you guys can see is my camera even on yeah <laughs> you know there is no fuel gauge I mean the newer bikes they probably got it I'm not 100% sure but this bike I mean when it need gas you just you know the light just comes on it starts blinking or something it does that but I would love you know and then when it starts blinking you don't know how much gas is really in there unless you open it up and take a look at least when you had a fuel gauge it kind of like showed you, you know, you had a quarter of a tank or less than a quarter of a tank or whatever. How much was actually in the gas tank. To where, you know, this bike, it doesn't. And I don't know why Suzuki didn't do that, you know, considering the fact. I've definitely noticed that since I got the 600, I do be filling up a lot more often than I did with, a, of course, a smaller um you know a smaller bike one you know you're going a lot faster more power things like that plus you know what i do realize i ride a lot more than what i did when i had my r3 might not be a lot but i did ride a lot more i mean um, a lot less so you know that would be probably one thing that i would have an issue with even though my girl in my eyes, she's almost perfect. I'm not knocking your nephew. I'm not knocking your girl. You've been good to me. Except this one, that one time. I think I told you guys about. Well, shoot, I even documented it. today 
Maria Su. So you know, one thing I you know would be that fuel gauge, not knowing exactly how much fuel you got left. That's my little young homie Benny. Don't you dare go. Another one, man, I would probably have to say would be, hmm, let me think, there ain't too many, y'all. I can't really think of too many. That's, yo, it says Greco or on the back of this Mercedes. I don't know if that's the dealership. I don't know. I've never seen that before. But um, let me think. I think another one would probably be, hey, I know this is an older bike, but hey, I wish it had ABS. You know, I can't say that's one thing I hate about it, but I kind of got, I wouldn't say, when I had my 2020 R3, it had ABS, and I wouldn't say that, you know, I was bad on the brakes to a point where I needed it, I would just say that, you know, it was good that it was there in case it, I ever needed it, you know, I do hear people, and you know, another thing is that I might not like about these brakes, it, I mean, um, about the bike would be the brakes, you know, they say, and at first I didn't know what people meant when they said that the brakes was a little spongy or squishy, now I know, now I know exactly what they mean, you do got to press a little harder, especially the front brakes, you got to press just a little bit harder you know get it to a complete complete stop i mean some people might want it there i mean if you got like some what is it oh shoot i can't even think right now but you know the good brakes what the hell brembo you know if they was it was some brembos or something like that and they just bite hard so i kind of understand now what they talk about you know how the Brembo brakes are but I mean these ain't Brembo's but they're they not bad but I mean they could be better so let, let's say that is one other thing that I probably would um like to have better on but um anyways I'll continue this list when I get right back let me go up and run up in here real quick be right back all right y'all your boy is back I forgot where I had left off at. I know I was talking about the... Oh, yeah, I was talking about the brakes. Like, yeah, they are a little squishy. But I figure, you know, not bad, though. You know what, Suzuki... They make a... I wouldn't say a, a budget bike. But they make... You know, the bikes is not as expensive as all the other um, contenders you know manufacturers I will say that they're one of the cheaper ones which I don't know why like cause a Jixxer 1000 nice as all get out R1 nice as all hell too but I don't see why there would be such a big difference in um in price like that you know people say you know I don't I, don't, I really don't know I couldn't tell you like for example you can get an R1 that'd be like 20 grand or more and then you got a Jixxer 1000 same year they both the same year and a Jixxer 1000 might run you 16 you know 15 grand or something like that so there's a big difference you know thousands of dollars in difference pick up on her man but um let's continue on this list of the things that I do not like damn it can I go this way is this a dead end I don't know I ain't really went this route before as I'm just exploring But um, let 
me see here. Another thing, you know what I don't like, and I don't know why Suzuki does this. They might have changed it, and that's the um, you got to grab in the clutch to start the bike. You know, even my like I had a 2012 Honda CBR, a 250, and all I had to do was um, just press the button. You know, press the start button, and it comes right on. Same deal with my um, my Yamaha R3. But, you know, Suzuki, they got you holding in the clutch first just to start the bike up. Now, if I'm not mistaken, like I know the Jixxer 1000, like the newer one, is just now push start, you know. So, old lady's looking like I'm speeding. Like, oh my God, what is he doing? I'm not speeding in your neighborhood, ladies. Hey, clean that doo doo up. <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely one of the things that you know I don't really like. Oh, I know where I'm at. I'm making that U turn, okay. Guess I'll wait. Definitely, I don't know why Suzuki did that. You know, make you grab the clutch, push the clutch in before you start the bike. I guess they just wanted to be different. I don't know. But like I said, I think the Jixxer 1000, the newer ones, like I want to say like 2017 or something or better, they might have, They, I think they might have changed it. Turn that music down a little bit. But uh, let me see, what else could possibly be the things that I might dislike about my girl here? Huh, let me think, let me think. Damn, I just thought about it, man. I don't think I, oh, I'm about to say, I don't think I can get the, um, the turn signal. I was thinking of the weight, but I'm good. I was, didn't know if I can trigger that, uh, <laughs> signal all right but let me see what else well, I'm just exploring right now y'all just trying to holler at you guys We talked about the brakes, we talked about the clutch, the fuel gauge, what could be some other things that I might not like about my girl? Hmm. One thing I do don't like and don't know why Suzuki would have done this to the 2007 Jixxer 600s is the rectifier. Now, if y'all been checking out my channel, y'all know that you know about a month or so after I got this bike, I had to uh, I put in a new rectifier and a new stator. Reason being, the rectifier had burnt out and it gets too hot. They they placed the rectifier in a in a in a bad location. They placed the rectifier right behind the um, radiator, not in front of the radiator, behind the radiator, and it 
just gets too hot and that right in front of, uh, behind the um, radiator but in front of the headers so you know that ain't nothing but heat so a lot of people who might you know you guys who might have had the uh, 07 Jixer 600 y'all might have had changed it changed our rectifier or and relocated it and if you haven't relocated it then you probably is if you ain't relocated and you probably went through a couple of them you know what i'm saying but yeah i don't know why suzuki did that either they should have actually put in um What's that called? What is that called? You know, um, I'm sorry, I got a brain fart. You know when they call, you know, um, like a warning, a uh, a call back or something. What is it called, y'all? Help me out. Put it in the comments unless I don't get it. You know, to where all the 2007 Jixer 600s should have got like free rectifier and you know located on the bike. If y'all been checking me on, y'all know I put it on the side. That's where you know they actually made them. It's been such a problem that some somebody created a bracket. Somebody created a bracket to go on the side of the, your Suzuki to, to relocate the uh, rectifier. Oh damn, I ain't know my, my zipper is open. Not my pants zipper, y'all. I'm talking about my, my jacket. Damn. neighborhood in a minute this is where it all started but yeah y'all like i guess the problem was so so bad and so often and frequent was that some manufacturer created a, a doggone um a bracket you know a rectifier relocation bracket just so you know because i guess i ain't gonna say i guess it happens because it you know just happens so often but yeah that's definitely one thing that i don't like and hopefully i've corrected the issue and my rectifier don't burn out anymore knock on wood <laughs> You know, and my rectifier, I don't have this issue no more. Because, you know, I mean, I changed the stator also. But I did that because they say if your rectifier go, you might as well change the stator also. Because it's an issue. But, yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, what I say? I wouldn't say, I'll, I mean, I guess you can count the stator as one also. things that I don't like about my my Jixxer 600 also you know what I've heard people um been having issues with they shifter to where sometimes you know going in from first and trying to get into second that it gets stuck in neutral but I just figured that was just me not you know clicking all the way up into second but yeah they yeah that's that's some people's issues also you know I've seen that people had a few issues but yeah y'all so what I did I, what did I say I said it was we said rectifier shoot that should have been the number one issue the 
and rectify the fact that it's actually behind the radiator and in front of the headers you definitely what up Benny that, that that's definitely you know an issue that should have been my first issue because that actually cost me money but yeah you know the fuel gauge I did say that but that's that's a small thing you know I, I look at it as if it can be corrected by just keeping your tank full but yeah I do wish I knew how much gas I had in my in my tank though <laughs> you know when that light go to flashing and it's low you need gas I want to know like how long I got to get to that gas station <laughs> I don't want to be on the side of the road or nothing but yeah man the rectifier should have been number one ABS brakes uh, some people like it, some people don't. Look at this damn bird. This one here. Get out of the damn way. Yeah, some people like it, some people don't. And then what else did I say? So we, we said the brakes. The rectifier. The fuel, the fuel gauge. What else was it? I'm trying to think. Like I, like one thing I do love. Oh, what the hell was that? What did I just run over? I heard a pop or I felt something. Hopefully I ain't. from yeah one thing I do say I love though is the is the comfort like you're in an aggressive seating position but I've sat on like the R1 and the R6 a lot more aggressive those is race bikes <laughs> I think Suzuki basically made a street, a race bike for the streets. That's what you can call this, a race bike for the streets. I can't think of nothing else. I love my girl. And I must say there's a lot more things that I love, you know, on my bike than I hate. And I can't think of too many things that I actually hate about it. Some people might say, oh yeah, man, the power or... But see, that's when people been on, you know, 1,000 cc's and then they try to compare it to a 600. Like, come on, that's apples and oranges. Apples and oranges, y'all. Oh, there's a flat spot right here in between this RPM and that RPM. I'm like, man, come on. Then again, I don't know. It, it could be my bike acts this way. Could be because of the tune. I'm just gonna stop right in the middle of the street, huh? People, yo. You know what I'm saying? Could be the tune. Believe it or not, them tunes can make your bike act certain ways. Understanding and what I've looked up and researched, they say it was something with the fuel injector or whatever. So I don't know. Look at that monster there. Ooh, wee. 
That's a nice looking pit right there, yo. But anyways, I'ma holler. Y'all be easy. Y'all keep on checking up on your boy, man. If this is a long ass video, my bad. If y'all still rocking with me, appreciate you. And I'ma holler, man. Y'all be easy. Stay safe. Hey, hit me up on Instagram at Ricky Clark One, and um, let's keep it popping, y'all. Ah, uh -huh. peace.